Hey guys, welcome to my review of Dynasty by Tom Holland. This is probably the book to read if you're interested about Imperial Rome, and you don't really know anything about it. And the reason I say that is because this book is probably my favorite history book, but it's very much spending three to four hours on a couple different areas of history. It doesn't spend as much time on any single one of them as perhaps you'd expect it to. So for instance, it goes through Julius Caesar, Augustus, Tiberius, uh, what was it, Claudius was it? And Caligula, though perhaps those last two are in a different order. The thing I've noticed about this book is because it only covers each Caesar for about three to four hours, you feel like you're getting a shortened single episode documentary on them. You're not getting the full picture of who they were. You're getting more than you had, particularly in the UK where you don't necessarily get taught about the Rome. But each of these characters you could probably get a 20 hour biography on, or 500 page biography, sorry, I, I listened to the audiobook, and it feels like you're getting a sort of snippet. It's still really good and I still really enjoyed it, but if you're someone who's already aware of certain things about these people, you probably won't learn that much new if you've already learned something already. This is very much a book for people who are, haven't really touched on the Caesars of Rome at all. Otherwise, the degree to which you heard of them, to a certain degree, means you probably won't learn that much. Um, unless, of course, you only sort of learned it for long, like a 10 minute YouTube video or something. Now, I got into this book because I went through HBO's Rome, which is basically two seasons of very graphic, very gritty television based, generally speaking, quite accurately on what happened around the time of Caesar when he made himself dictator, the death of Caesar, etc., etc. And it was very fascinating because it's one of those things where it was all very Shakespeare and everything was heightened. It, it was almost pantomime like, where if it were fiction, you wouldn't believe it because it'd be too bizarre. But because it actually happened, there's something about it think, wow, it, it's all very much a case study, and I'll touch on that in a second. Touching on Rome as a HBO show, I'm pretty sure it was the proto Game of Thrones. I feel like it's the thing that probably cleared the way for years later for Game of Thrones to be done because of all the things, the incestuous relationships, the blood, the gore, the scheming, the rape, the political strife, all of those things reminds you very much of Game of Thrones, and this book very much feels like, yeah, this is basically the book which basically justifies, oh yeah, people in history actually did do those things. In some cases, it went several measures beyond what happens in Game of Thrones, and makes Game of Thrones in some cases look quite tame. I won't spoil it for you, because I think you should very much listen to this or read it, but it really blew me away, and it kind of freaked me out at some parts. We have all met someone like Kendrick Hill. It's that guy in the office who's just a bit more passive-aggressive than you think they should be, and you're scared of what would happen if they were given real power. Caligula was given power, and he was absolutely insane. He reminded me of... I, I describe him as a mix between Joffrey and Heath Ledger's Joker. He was something of nightmares, and I think people like that have a way of telling you something about the lesser sides of human nature. And this whole thing as a case study of human nature, history is good for that, because it teaches you what people can be like. It sort of takes this very large thing, because today we're all talking about, you know, people saying things, making bad jokes 10 years ago, and people getting cancelled. We're talking about people killing each other, raping each other. We're talking about people doing truly horrible things on a spectacular scale. And you can't help but learn something about what human beings are capable of, and how most people will just do what they have to to fit in, and how people, a bit like in Star Wars, how does, how does democracy die? Quite often with thunderous applause. Augustus, he basically made it seem like there was something there to fight for, but he took it away and it was all for show. He was very much a puppeteer. He didn't call himself the emperor, he just called himself the first citizen. Because he, he sort of held the strings, but he was content to make people feel like they were in charge, but really he controlled the strings, and that sort of deteriorates all the way to when you get to Caligula, where he's just not even trying anymore. He wants to appoint his horse as consul, which is a bit like their version of prime minister, I suppose you could say. This was really fun to read. It's one of those things where I feel, you know, in any workplace, I mean, whether you work as an MP or whether you work at McDonald's, there are people who absolutely, on a smaller scale, behave like people do in this book. And I think it's something that is educational and it taught me about human nature in a way that I wish I had learned more about in high school. Actually listening to this audiobook while I was walking around the UK's National Museum, so it's like one of the big museums from, well, stuff all over the world, which is a different conversation as to why it's in that museum. But it was more interesting listening to the audiobook. And I'd be looking at bus sort of, you know, stone sculptures of the actual people in the books and thinking, oh my God, that's the guy from the book. He looks like me. And it would, it would blow me away. And I think, wow, 
you know, these people actually existed because you can always be tempted to say, is this fictional? You know, how much of it, and you see the person right there, it's sort of marble, and you, I, it, it blew me away. Now to round off, if I had to say some negatives about this book, because I have said a lot of positives, Again, it doesn't focus on any particular season for too long. It's more like three to four hours on each. So I'd say maybe a hundred pages or so, which if you think about it, if there's a certain one you want to focus on, it doesn't really give you that much. It's more of a series of brief summaries, but it's still really good. And I say brief, we'd be talking like a hundred, 150 pages for each or something like that. But I will say that Julius Caesar, who is of course the most important Caesar, the OG Caesar, he isn't really the topic of this. I suspect the author in his other book, The Rubicon, I don't know because I haven't listened to it, but I suspect Caesar probably covers a bit more of the content in that. This touches on him, but it feels more like a prologue. And I say Augustus is very much the closest thing to a main character in this. And to be honest, he is a very interesting, intelligent emperor who you could learn things from. But let's be clear, they were absolutely tyrants. Funnily enough, our word for king, I think, is actually a translation of the word dictator, which is, I think, what Caesar called himself. That's, that's good for four. So anyway, that's my review of the book. I hope you enjoyed listening to the review. I hope you guys will feel energized to listen to this book because it was generally incredible. If you have any books that you think I should read, feel free to tell me in the comment section. Any books like this, any other interesting parts of history which compare to this. If you like the video, feel free to leave a like. And if you want to subscribe, by all means, please do. I'm going to put up some videos and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Okay, all right, thank you for listening.